15-minute snowmen. We get to do four of them. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with a fun project. We're doing those cute little snowmen that I introduced at the beginning. So we're going to do four snowmen cards. All the materials are listed down below for more information and the I card is where the playlist is. We are going to have fun. This whole video took me about one hour to do four cards. I'm going to show you step by step how I'm doing it. And these are all basic, easy shapes. None of them are hard shapes. We're not doing any uh, hard perspective or any of those kind of weird things. This is just a straightforward, fun and very enjoyable process. I am just looking at this going, I want his nose to go to the left. I'm making arbitrary decisions as I go along. You can draw your snow people however you wish to. You are not um, dictated by what I do. Oh, you see how I did the one big eye and the one little eye? Yeah, that is that is kind of a perspective thing. The eye that's closest to you is going to be bigger. That's all. And it's a really easy trick to remember. And it's easy to, to just do it. Something that you do want to make sure is that the crown of the hat, that big opening area, is actually wide enough for the head of the snowman to fit inside. So I'm just making sure that I'm fitting his head inside the hat. Easy peasy. You can do this. I want you to see how being creative, even with just a snowman, is so rewarding. Now I am going to draw all of these out in pencil first, like I said, so that you can see, but I'm not being super detailed with it. I am going to be inking everything. Now this whole video took me about an hour and a half to record in real time, but if I was to do just one snowman, I figure it's probably about 15 minutes per card. And I think that's quite reasonable considering we're drawing the card, inking the card, and watercoloring the card, and then cutting them apart, stacking them together with little uh, mat mats, I guess they would be, and then assembling the cards. I don't show you assembling the cards this time. If you want that, please make sure and leave me a comment and let me know down below in the more information box if that's something you want to see. There's lots of places that are showing how to assemble cards. Now this is another cute one. I decided it's going to be kind of a young looking snow person. There's only two balls. I only made him two balls high. Now, three balls high seems to be more of a grown-up size. I'm making up things as I'm going along. I am just having fun, and I hope that you are having fun too, that you are exploring, sharing your creativity with those that you care about. Now, this is a broom. Now, it doesn't look much like a broom. It could be a rake. It could be a shovel. It all comes down to the details that you put in with the pen. So again, I'm leaving things open for you so that you have the opportunity to develop your own characters or you can draw exactly what you see me doing here on the screen. So what are you guys up to for the holidays? I am sticking around home. I'm going to be one of those people that says, nope, no family stuff this year. Uh, maybe we'll do some things where we are, you know, video conferencing or possibly for Thanksgiving, what I think we're doing is I'm cooking the whole dinner. 
uh, enough for 14 people. And then I'm going to be making up to-go boxes, basically. And we are going to go and do porch delivery of Thanksgiving dinners for my parents and my husband's family and for our son and his family. And I think that's a lot of fun to do because at least we're all getting to eat the same thing. We can call each other. We can talk and have a really nice time that way, staying safe. Now, oh, this one. I love this particular snow panel, <laughs> panel of snow people, because it's like a daddy snowman and his kid whatever age the kid is. And it's like the kid is saying, pick me up, pick me up. I love this little one. And I just was making it up as I was going along. I was thinking about my grandsons and thinking about, you know, when my son was little and how he would hold his hands up to be picked up. Yeah. The... That's one of the things about doing cards like this is that it helps you to tell stories. It helps you to remember stories. And you could even have a story going on in your card if you wanted to. So fun. So easy. And yeah, they're balls, triangles, rectangles, circles. So all very basic shapes and you can put them together however you want. I know that there are places on Pinterest that have people have pinned um, faces. They've pinned sheets that have like, these are faces to use for cartoony creatures. That would be a really good place to get some ideas and references, or you can think up your own fun little faces. This is the moon going in behind those snow people. I want this very warm glow to be happening. So it's going to be a dark sky. There's going to be this nice yellow moon and this very happy, warm feeling between these two very caring little snow people. Oh, if you're interested, these cards are going to be sent out to my patrons who are paid as of the 1st of December, 2020. So 2020 is going to do something fun for my patrons. They are every single paid patron. And if you're brand new, if you go and sign up on patreon.com, deliberately creative, and you are paid as of the beginning of December, you'll get a Christmas card. That's, I'm doing it for everyone at all levels. So even the $2 level, I want you to see how it's, you know, this is a fun thing to do. And if you choose to stick with me, that's awesome. You can cancel anytime you wish. Uh, it's nice if you let me know ahead of time, just so that I can be prepared because it's kind of sad when people leave. So this little one is an angel, little angel snow person. And you know, the wings don't necessarily match. The halo isn't quite straight. And I think that that's fun. It's all part of the charm. So you guys are getting kind of a little stream of consciousness chat as I'm doing this, because for some reason, I lost all of the audio on this video. It's really weird because I checked the recording before this one and I checked the recording. I did a little sample recording after it and the sound works just fine. But this particular video, for some reason, the sound stopped working. So we're just going to do this all as a voiceover. I hope that you enjoy that. Now these little arms are so easy. It's basically a super long skinny triangle with two little triangles at the ends for fingers and a thumb. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the design work on this one, put a little bit of detail, but remember that this is a pencil sketch on all of these and you don't have to be 
super precise and your pencil lines don't have to be as dark as I'm drawing them. I'm doing this so that you can see it. It's not necessary to do it as dark as I'm doing here. And we're going to go ahead and start the inking process. I am going to take a picture right after I get it all inked. So that way you've got the opportunity to you know, watercolor or trace my designs. They are going to have the tape on the paper still. It's not going to be separated that way. It's just going to be uh, quick little sketches so that you can color along with me if that's what you want to do. And let's get started. Inking process is just basically drawing over all of the pencil lines with my pen. The pen I'm using is the Eco Pen. It is waterproof. It's doesn't smudge it dries almost instantly so I don't have any problems with it you can also use this pen with your alcohol markers so if you wanted to draw this and do this whole thing in alcohol markers go for it the pen isn't going to smear and it isn't going to migrate I love that now this inking process took me about 13 minutes if this was real time it took me 13 minutes to ink it it took me 11 minutes to draw them. So it's taken me 24 minutes so far on this video. And I figured the speeding it up so it's only about three minutes of watching the inking process is probably sufficient. Now, if you want something, if you want to see this slower, there is a little gear underneath of the video and you can slow this down. Now, when you slow it down, my voice is going to start going really, really slow. So just turn the sound off. That's if you want to see precisely what I am doing. Now I am making that into an actual broom and not a shovel or a rake, but you could make it whatever you wanted it to be. Just saying. I really enjoy inking things. Now, ink is one of my favorite and probably my first artistic loves. Doing inking, drawing things in ink. I I could have drawn all of this without doing the pencil process, but I thought that the pencil process would make it easier for you to see exactly how these things get put together. And the pencil process, it's nice because it does give you the option to adjust things a little bit as you're going along. Maybe your first instinct or your first line that you put down isn't exactly what you want it to be. That's okay. With a pencil, you can erase it afterwards. But don't go erasing your pencil lines until after you're done doing your inking. And the reason why is because then you know what you did wrong <laughs> and you can go in and do it the right way without having to uh, draw it and redraw it. Now, there's some extra lines in these wings. No big deal. They end up just being texture in the wings and that's great. I'm using a kneaded eraser to erase everything except for the outline of the moon. I tried to keep the outline of the moon there still. All right, let's grab the watercolor. I am going to be using the Arteza 12 set of half pan watercolors. This is a student grade watercolor, maybe a little bit better than student grade, but it's not professional and that's okay because you know what? These are holiday cards and holiday cards, you send them out and maybe the people will keep them. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll, if you're lucky, maybe they'll use them in another craft project, making ornaments or something to go onto their tree. You could, if you wanted to, punch a little hole at the top and put a little string on it and then use just a tiny bit of double stick tape to hold it to the card front and say, take this off and use it as an ornament. You know, you can do those kinds of things too. I 
am really enjoying the coloring process on this. And yeah, I'm using colors that are sort of all over the place. First, you know, I try to keep with five or six colors and do everything with those colors. So I'm using the dark blue, the yellow, the magenta, the black, the orange, um, red, kind of like the cadmium-ish or scar scarlet red for a little bit. That's all the colors I'm using out of this palette. And that's all I need because I can mix my purple and I can mix my green and working the colors in around in the background first. The first two here, I did a wet in wet to move the colors around and to know that they weren't going to get stuck in any one place. Now that since I have all this blue out and it's on my brush, I will be using it in more places, but first I want to add a little bit more color and texture to the sky and the ground around these guys. It, just play with your colors. This is like a coloring book. You can do anything you want to in here. So we will be using gouache in a few minutes to make some splattered stars. We will be using some metallic blue to make some sparkle on the snow people and on their ground. We are just going to have fun and experiment with the colors. Now I'm going to go in with this really dark green and I'm putting in sort of a diagonal of dark green. I'm trying, I started trying to put it in as a flat wash and then I decided I don't really want a flat wash. I want some texture in the sky. So, you know, I just start moving it around a little bit more. I don't go and pick up more paint. I do go back and touch areas where if you're doing a flat wash, you wouldn't. So that way I can have more texture and it's almost like this little snow angel is in front of a bunch of trees. And then I can put the ground in below the snow angel that's more snowy. And it's like he's sitting on a hill. I love it. All right, here we go. We're going to be using this Prussian blue all over the place in varying concentrations. So really concentrated for dark shadows, less concentrated for lighter shadows, maybe where there's some highlights, almost, but not quite. Just little things like that. And I'm going to make this go all the way around, be the snow on the ground shadow, shadows, be the coloring on all four of these panels, doing the same thing. Underneath of any edge, it's darker. Where it's uh, going around and becoming more light, I don't put it as dark. So this is where I'm going to speed this up even more. Yep, just power through, having the same colors repeated on all four of the cards helps it feel like an actual set. They go together. They are part of a grouping. You could take all four of these images and put them all in individual little frames and hang them on the wall. And because you use the same colors and you are the one who drew them all, they go together as a set. And that would make a fantastic gift for somebody who loves to collect snow people. Make them all four of them, put them in little frames, and give them to them as a present. You are sharing yourself, your creativity, and you're acknowledging something that you know that they love. It's a win for everybody.
Before you move to the next step, make sure that you dry really well, either drying it using a heat tool or a blow dryer, or just set it aside and let it dry. Come back in an hour or 20 minutes, whatever it takes, depends on how warm your house is. And then you can start going in and adding more layers of paint, adding your yellow. I wanted to make sure that my yellow didn't turn green, so I wanted everything to be dry before I put the yellow on here. And I'm putting the yellow all around. It's going on all the things, all of the cards, just because that's one of my colors that's going to go across all of the artwork. The same with the magenta and the blue. Those colors are going to show up somehow in all of the artwork. Makes it a lot more fun that way. And now I am going to go ahead and extra speed up this little section because I'm just doing details. I'm just popping in more details and you can do your own details exactly the way you want. Although I am going to say I put the color on those leaves, I spread it out, and then I picked up. And it was really cool because I put the yellow first and then the dark green. I was able to wipe off a lot of that dark green and it made it have such a pretty highlight. All right, we're going into faster fast forward and music.
All right, now it's time for some gold metallic pen going in. This is the Uniball Signo UM153 metallic gold pen. The information is down below in my Amazon store. So click on my Amazon store and go to my drawing and doodling supplies. That's where the gold metallic pen and the silver metallic pen are. I am just going in and putting in texture lines. These are doodle lines. These are not anything very specific. And I use it to color in the scarf. I used it on the halo, on the wings, and put a couple little touches of gold on some of the other cards. And that just gives it that little bit of shimmer, little bit of sparkle. That's all I'm doing there. So now let's grab the white gouache and a toothbrush. I am testing it on a black card to make sure that I don't have too much water in my paint. And then I'm using my, my left hand to actually mask the area that I am, don't want to have the splatter end up on. Just little things, little texture bits. The splatter looks like stars or it could be snow. And now I am grabbing a little bit of this metallic blue Arteza. So pretty. It's very subtle and it gives a lovely little sparkly shimmer without feeling like I'm putting glitter all over everything. And it's time for a few more details. I am just putting in a little bit of some polka dots on the hat and then on the bow tie of this cute little snowman. Just things that make me happy. I will be painting them with gouache. I forgot to do it during the actual show. So I do take white gouache and just color in the polka dots ever so lightly with white gouache after I've turned off the camera. Sorry about that, but you do see it in the final photographs. So you'll get to see the effect. And it's time for a few last little details with the pen. The black pen writes over the top of the gold marker just fine, writes over the top of watercolor just fine. And this tape, I love it. It is the tape that I've got listed now. It is not regular artist tape. This is a drafting tape. It says artist tape, but it's the paper drafting tape. It's a nice sticky tape. It seals really well, but it peels off the paper really well too. I am so happy that I picked it up. Now, I am going to go ahead and cut these apart. I'm not going to show you all the steps of putting together the cards, but I cut them apart. I layer them with some mats for the background, and then I layer them again onto actual card bases. Okay, here's what they look like, just stacked up on their mats, and now how they look completed on their card bases, all adhered. I just used double stick tape to stick everything down. And I'm really happy with it. I hope you are too. I hope you're enjoying this fun 12 days of holiday designs. And there's lots more designs than just 12 because I have several videos of four designs on each video. So yeah, you're going to be able to do all the cards and all the gifts that you want. The iCard is in the top right hand corner and it has the playlist and a couple other things if you might find them interesting. There is a link to Patreon up in the iCard also. Remember, 
Go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.